My name is Lee Quaintant, uh, spelled Q-U-A-I-N-T-A-N-C-E. And what do you do? I am an organic farmer down in Edgerton, Kansas. And you're also a, a member of the... The Kansas City Food Circle. You're a on the coordinating committee. All right. Got that out of the way. Okay. <laughs> One thing I didn't think to ask, am I supposed to be looking at you or looking at the camera yeah, or both? Yeah, look at me. You're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so. Uh -huh. Okay. So, the, the, um, well, we, were, we were on, we were talking. Do you think, I mean, are you, other, you know, of other organic farmers who are also worried about this crop? Uh, I haven't discussed it with them too much, but I know there is a great amount of concern, you know, within the organic industry as well as all the local producers about genetically modified organisms overall, and you know whether it be corn, beans, rice, whatever. Yeah, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of concern about it. And why is that? Because of the contamination issue. <coughs> uh, you know, an example is that uh, there was a, an organic. You know, a producer over here in Missouri, that he sold a, uh, a truckload of soybeans to Clarkson Grain over in Illinois, and uh, you know put it on a truck that had been cleaned out, and you know after he got done, they put a sample in a Ziploc bag, put it in a cap. He got it over to to Clarkson, and they tested it, and it uh, you know, turned up red for you know, GMO contamination. What they found out was that you know, they washed the truck, the trailer. But when they rolled the tarp over it, there was enough GMO dust on the bottom of the tarp to contaminate the load. So they had to reject it. What are the <coughs> regulations regarding GMOs and organic farmers? None tolerated. Some of them, I think it's up to you know, 0.03, 0.05, something like that, but just virtually intolerant. So. <laughs> I'm trying to, because I'm new at this, so mm -hmm. I'm trying, I think I'm going to ask it a different way. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> oh, well, no, that's good. Okay. Oh, um, and, and what about, and what, why are, why is, why is the organic community intolerant of GMOs? It has to do with the processes involved. Organic is getting back to doing things the natural way. And you know, from a fertility standpoint, you're using manures, you're using green manure plow downs, you know, the crop rotations, that kind of thing. You know, using natural based materials to come in and increase the fertility levels. You're you're doing natural things to control weeds, you know, doing your tillage after dark. You know, you're you're getting your your micronutrient levels balanced out. That also controls weeds, that kind of thing. And you know, with you know, even a conventional hybrid, you know, you take an, a corn and a corn and you're, you're pollinating it one way, that's okay. But when you're taking a gene out of a fish and putting it in a tomato, that is a not natural. And so, you know, that, that kind of thing is, uh, that's, that's the thing that they're, they're trying to avoid. And I guess my last question, what, how great of a, uh, of an impact do you think this is going to have, this rice crop, do you, I mean, is it going to impact, do you think, your production at all? If it does, it's going to take a while for it to get here, probably, but, uh, you know, by the same way, you know, I, you know I, I can be impacted, you know, in two different ways. One, I can be impacted as a farmer, you know, with contamination, things coming in. I can also be impacted as a consumer. And my guess is it's probably more apt to impact me as a consumer on a on an earlier basis. <coughs> and, and what so what would you like to see happen? I'd like to see genetically modified organisms just go away. You know, just you know, but you know, at this point, you know, there's enough uh, enough. You know, Monsanto has got enough uh, influence and that kind of thing that I think it's going to be extremely difficult. One of the things that I think that could help would be if we get to where we're labeling all the GMOs in the food chain, and that way we can let the American public be an informed consumer. And that way they can vote with their own dollars, you know, whether they want soybeans that, you know, have the GMO contamination or if they don't. And, you know, that will send a message. 
because at this point the consumer is pretty much uninformed. They're getting very, very minor bits of information, and so you know it's it's one of those things that you know they need to you know we need to educate the public more and that kind of thing, and uh, and then you know let them decide what they want, and you know basically they can figure out for themselves you know what's going to work and what's not.